Hello! In today's fifth tutorial for the onboarding process, I want to show you about Booleans. Now, Booleans are a great fascinating tool when you're trying to create more complex objects. They're a great way to visualize. Again, this is going to be from a 2D artist perspective. So the geometry may be a little messy if you're already familiar with 3D. Uh, but if you know how to tackle booleans and clean them up with bevels, as well as cutting, uh, then this tutorial may not be for you. This is a beginner tutorial. Alright, so a very handy add-on to have is something called bool tool. But before that, I'll show you what you can do with just the default cube and uh, the vanilla modifiers. So currently we have our default cube here in the scene. And before we get started, I'm just going to turn screencast keys on. Everything seems to be all right. Okay, so we have the default cube here. Let's duplicate this with Shift D, and let's just drag it to the side like this. I'm gonna scale it down slowly, and as always, I want to apply the scale because currently, as you can see here, the scale is a little bit smaller. We always want this to one. This is just a good practice to have. So Control A, scale. Now, if if I want this to be attached to this, usually you know you can just do something like that. But if I want to like further manipulate the edges around, there's a handy Boolean operation called union. So go in the object that you want things to be attached to. Basically, uh, think of the object you're selecting as the one that's going to be manipulated by the shapes. So when I click on this, add modifier, and we're going to navigate towards Boolean. Now, right now, you can see there is intersect, union, and difference, operation type, object. We can do collections, and well, I'll get into that a bit later. So, we're going to click on this, and it looks like we only have cube 01 right here. But let's say if you have a lot of objects in your scene, you can click on the eyedropper tool like this. Select on the mouse, and right now it's creating a difference. If I drag this, in. It's hard to see currently because if we go to wireframe mode, you can see that it's already created cuts this way. Now I can show you this in real time. If we move this out, you can see there's no cuts here. Furthermore, to see what's actually happening here, we can change the visibility type of this cube. Now there are add-ons that streamline this process, but it's also good to know how to do it. Uh, this way, the old vanilla way. So I'm going to navigate towards the object properties, something called visibility. You click on that. Uh, my bad, it's one down below, viewport display. And right now it's display as, I'm just going to take this up here, display it as texture. We're going to click on texture, and there's a number of options here. We can click on wire. And as you can see now, our cube has been cut in. So if we drag it out, you can see you can change the scale this way. This is a non-destructive method. What that means is like all this is kind of like sitting in a state where you can still edit and modify. It's a, it's a quantum state. I don't know if that's true, but <laughs> there we go. So that's cool. What else can we do? Well, with the Boolean modifier, if we click on this, back to our object that's being Booleaned, I'm just going to call this... Uh, let's see here, uh, bool, and then we can call this cutter, because it's cutting into it. What else can we do with the uh, a Boolean object? So if we navigate towards our bool object, click on modify properties, we can do something called union. And then what that does is it just attaches this object directly onto it. There's also something called intersect which is kind of like a mask tool between two, you're clipping both, so it's only taking the difference of both objects within this bound. Hopefully you can see what's happening here. So this allows you to create a number of different shapes. Let's go back to our bool tool and hit difference. So well, one thing we can uh, do, or a trick I like to do, instead of like duplicating this object and pasting it all around, we can tap into this object because it's actually still a mesh. We can duplicate this and move it up. Be careful not to intersect as you can see here that it's causing some problems. So we move it like this 
you can see we can start really creating interesting shapes this way. If I tab out, you can see all around what it's doing. And we can also add in different types of meshes as well. So if I click on the object itself from the, uh, snapping oh, or basically uh, spotting shapes where the 3D cursor is located at, I can shift a mesh and let's just add a, a cylinder for now. Rotate it this way, RX90. And right now it looks like we're just adding a mesh this way. Oh, actually I seem to have tabbed out my bad. Tab back into here, shift a cylinder. Now that, that works, RX90. And if we drag this down like this, again, remember we have to be careful. We don't want to intersect these shapes like this. This It's only specific to, if you're editing the cutter object itself a lot, it's gonna create a lot of weird artifacting this way, as you can see here, even if I split up. So to get around that, let's say if I wanted this to go all the way through, I would have to separate the selection like this and then create actually a new Boolean modifier and select the cylinder or cutter 01. And if I move it in inwards, well, also it seems like it has created the origin point here. So in our previous tutorial, we learned how to move the origin back to the center, which is a heck of a hotkey with control shift alt C origin to geometry and now it's back that way so if we scale this up you can see now it's not uh, creating weird artifacting or like destroying the object so we can do that and add it this way now we can also tab back in to this object and add in a number of cuts but we have actually access to all these fun modifiers so instead of like me trying to guess if I want to array this object forward, I can click on add modifier and array. And it's going backwards this way, but we can either do two things of just moving this object forward like this, or I can just do negative. But let's just keep this for now. It looks like it's going from one square to another. Let's just make it a little bit bigger by two. And let's see what happens with four. We can scale this down. And let's just try and get that there. And move this slightly up. What else can we do? Well, since this object is a cylinder, we can stretch it all the way to the other side. Like this. So we can get it mirrored on both sides. Now this only works if there's nothing on top. If there's something actually on top, we would have to apply the array and mirror it in the center. And to show you that, I'll show you that in a second, but just to show you, like you can get it both ways like this, tab out, you can see we have nice little circles this way. Okay, so to f to uh, not have it funny like that, you can move this like this. I'm using the scale modifier, S and Y, I'm constraining it to the Y axis, S, Y. We will have to apply this. The reason for that is because I think the array takes into account the object origin. To test it out, let's do all transformations. Ah, I'm wrong. <laughs> all right, so we, with a uh, mirror modifier to work, it takes into account where the origin is. And if we want to flip on the x-axis, it's going to like divide a plane here and mirror it that way. Oh, I think this is the y-axis actually. Yeah, the y. Okay, so just to show you, we go to mirror. And we're going to do axis Y and bisect and Y is this? Oh, huh. I think we actually have to do it the other way. Oh, apply all. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I guess that doesn't work that way. I'll have to look into what the error is that way. So I think we can just duplicate this. And move it to this side or I mean the smart thing to do is <laughs> just if we want to mirror the whole object back that way we'll have to go in here apply all and then mirror this object on the y-axis like that and now you can see it's mirroring on the side I think we could also yes we could actually just have a, a mirror modifier so we can just only do one operation on one side Save the trouble. 
because again, this is still all hypothetically. Um, oh wait, no, I think I applied all the modifiers. Yeah, I did. Let's see if it actually worked with the cuts. Okay, so here let's add a mirror and Y bisect. But if we tab N, it's still a cube. And if we disable the stack, this is actually a wonderful tool to use. This modifier thing uh, stack here. I think you can access it through Edit Preferences, Add-ons. I think it's like Mod Modifier Tools right here. Because you won't have access to this, but this has been a wonderful, uh, handy add-on for me. Because you can like quickly hide all these objects, and you can toggle them on and off to see what the object's doing. Because hypothetically. We just still have a square here with all the booleans applied. That's pretty cool. So that's one way of using the boolean modifier. Um, just to show you some of the cool tricks you can do. Let's say if I tab into the this square here, I could click on the face on this uh, this face here. Well, sometimes it's good to go into local view if you're having a hard time with an object blo uh, blocking, which is just a uh, numpad slash. So I can click on this side, click the numpad slash, now it's selected, and then I can bevel with control B, and you can see, you can get really cool looking shapes this way. That's pretty cool. Uh, what else can we add? We can add a bevel modifier too, and you can see it just bevels everything this way. Uh, the bevel modifier can be a little finicky. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful tutorials on how to use this properly, because you have to like go in and remove clamp override and now you have access to doing like really big cuts but you can see it's like just exploding all over the place so it's a, it's a wild tool but once you get a handle on it um, it can be a very very powerful arsenal okay I think that's about it in terms of uh, bool tools because we talked about uh, cutting objects uh, adding union objects difference cutting if I want to make a very interesting shape like this, I can add, uh, let's just try that out. Let's add another Boolean modifier. So it's going to take all of this. Remember that uh, this is a hierarchy order, so it's going to go through these operations. So the Boolean is going to be the last. So it won't have any mirror modifiers. And if I just want like a really interesting complex shape, let's just use... Uh, I don't know, I've always wanted to see what a, a circle would look like in this. Shade smooth. Again, uh, if you want to see what's happening here, we'll have to go down into the object properties and display as, let's do wire, or we can do bounds. It's just going to be a big square, so it's probably better to do oh, bounds. I think we do sphere. Hmm. Bounds? Nah, I'm just going to go back to wire. It makes more sense to me. Okay, so we click on this. And we're going to go to the difference modifier, click on here. You can see it's like eating that away with some artifacting. But if we do intersect, oops, wrong object here. And let's try and like get something kind of cool looking with a sphere. Because it's usually hard to like, for me at least, to visualize these kind of complex objects like that. Like this looks very beautiful going around. Sure, there's like some weird shading errors here and there, but as you grow as an artist, you'll learn ways to combat that. And with this, the reason for that is because it's smooth shading as well as like um, the object itself is trying to calculate what the sphere as well as a, uh, a cube is doing here. And Berlin has a wonderful thing called Auto Smooth, so it just smooths th these objects out. And with all things, I wonder if I, if I duplicate this. Yes, so if I duplicate this um, object, I can still keep the previous object with all the cutters and then just duplicate this and commit all boolean modifiers. So right now, as you can see here, bool.01 is the one we duplicated. If I hit Alt-C, I can turn convert it into a mesh. And now, I move this, I have a mesh here. And now this is the kind of the workflow I start doing. It's going to show you a bit here where let's say, okay, cool, I have all these shapes here. Now you can just start, you know, editing this to your heart's content. Let's say, okay, this is another shape I, I would like to use in my uh, kit. So Shift D, move this to the side. Oh no, we can't move it to the side because it's still uh, using the cutters. Alt C, mesh, uh, 
And now if I move this to the side, now we have access to two kits and we just slightly moved it. And of course, this is the way that I like to build uh, objects. I, I tend to like making tiny components uh, to play with. It's kind of like Lego. And then afterwards, I just make something with them. And you can save that library out and append it to your pre uh, next future projects. It's always nice to have something to start out with, uh, to be inspired by. You can see there's like some errors here, but uh, cleanup's always needed. <laughs> All right. Hopefully this helps. Thank you.